church? Won't he do it? Our God's a good God. He woke us up this morning. He starts on the way. This morning. Last night he let you lay down. But he brought you back up again. Our God's a good God. Our God's a good God.
some help. Come on, somebody. Jesus had to have help. He had the 12, and then he had more. But if he needed help, we need help. Before we give honor to God this morning, to you and you and all of you watching by way of Facebook, and certainly you hear under the sound of my voice, we give honor to God this morning for his grace and his mercy. For his goodness. Yes, we thank God for this morning. And I thank God this morning for my colleague and Mrs. Uh, David Bennett. Who thought it not wrong with the time? Thank you for this morning. I believe they're on vacation. Amen. Amen. And so we thank God uh, they came to the Holy Union to work with us. Uh, our sermon this morning is coming from the scriptures we heard read by the servant. Mark, that's for Peter 1, 17 to 23. Um, and for a title, of, just for a thought, I uh, titled it, Holiness is Right. Yeah. You ought to tell yeah. somebody, Holiness, holiness. Oh, holiness. is Right. It's right. Yeah. 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 And Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For Lord, you're my strength yeah. and you're my redeemer. Yeah. Yeah. Holiness
to God's ways. According to John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, there are two types of holiness. We have the personal and the social. Personal holiness is growing in personal relationship each and every day as you journey on your journey. You're, you're growing in personal relationship with God. Social holiness is the practice of obeying Jesus' commandments to love God with all your heart and your soul and your mind and to love your neighbor as yourself. And loving one another as Christ loves us. So the Lord, the six says, the Lord lifted his countenance upon you and give you peace. The third level of blessing that we deal with in the spirit of man ends with the highest blessing of all, and that is peace. The word for peace, you've heard often used as shalom, which literally means uh, completeness or wholeness. And three great blessings following holiness or following peace is if you are a follower of Christ, you start by reflecting on the blessings that really matter. Christ's work on the cross, God's amazing forgiveness bought, that has been bought with a great price, and God's constant presence with us through our through the person and the power of the Holy Spirit. So, so the hope Peter is talking about in our text is a hope that is living. It's a living hope. A life-giving hope. It's an ongoing hope. And a hope that leads to life and also not only leads to life, but it also is a life that is lived out. So the love proclaimed here is, is the same. This love is, is life growing, and it is a, a way of life. Love. The love that is ours in Christ Jesus is not merely to be felt. It's also to be lived. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't give two cents for a love that you could only feel and you couldn't live it out. You gotta, it's an action word. You got to live it out. You got to do something. You got to show signs of love. You can tell me all day long that you love me. I hear you. But if you don't show me some sign that you love me, then I doubt what you say is from your heart. The path, the message of 1 Peter 17 say, if you call on him as father, who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourself with fear throughout the time of your exile. So Peter encourages us to practice godly conduct. Oh, it's tight. But it's right. Practice kindly. Practice kindly. Godly conduct. And so the meaning of 1 Peter, I believe 17 to 23, is that once you have placed your faith and your hope in God, because he raised Christ from the dead and gave him for our for him for our great glory, you were cleansed from your sins when you obeyed the truth. So now you must show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters. Love each other deeply with all your heart. Because real love involves selfless giving. Therefore, a self-centered person can truly love. Can I get a witness this morning? If someone is self-centered, they usually don't respond to the effort you put into the relationship. They may also disregard rules and 
uh, believing that rules and guidelines that they don't really apply to them. So to cope with a, a selfish person, you can set boundaries, tell them how you feel, or you can just simply cut them off. God's love and forgiveness frees you and me to take our eyes off ourselves and to meet others' needs. Sacrificing his life, Christ showed that he truly loved us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now you and I can love others by loving or by following his example. Peter is addressing himself to Christians who are, who are, who are in exile, strangers and foreigners, living in a world where they are unsure how they should act and think as Christians. He gives them four reasons to be faithful. To continue to live for Christ, even as exile. And although they have been banished from their homeland, he gives them reason why they should be faithful. And I believe that that is encouraging us as well to be faithful and to continue to live for Christ no matter what situation we find ourselves in. Oh yes, life is unfair, and sometimes we sometimes we feel like we're down more than we are up. But we have to remain faithful to the one who has called us. And I would like to share this morning these reasons, or these reasons, uh, with you as well, and then I'll be out of the way. The first one is the Father. God is fair in his judgment. That God is fair in his judgment. And you know we live in a world where a whole lot of stuff ain't fair. Pardon my English. But a whole lot of stuff that goes on is not fair. But God is fair in his judgment. And Peter says, since you call on a father who judges these persons uh, work impartially, because, because sometimes when you feel that the work you live and you do is treated with, uh, equal, with unequal fairness as others, and it causes you to feel that you have been uh, treated fair, unfair. So, you are, sometimes you're laughed at, you're, you're called names, and you're given the impression that you are a nobody. So it seems unfair. And I agree, it is unfair. But you know that God the Father, who is the ultimate judge of your sins and your actions and your attitudes, is not unfair. He is impartial. And therefore, live your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. A reverential fear of the Lord makes us to honor God in all things, always making a difference in our lives. So even our faith is strong, is as strong as our reverential worship and obedience to God. For new believers, and perhaps small children and some adults, the idea of fearing God is by explaining that it's a kind of respect. Fearing God is a kind of respect. We should respect God's power and God's authority. Because we, we desire to please Him. That's why we respect Him, because we want to please Him. Lord. And this is called reverential fear. Demons believe that God exists, but they do not worship or 
reverence him. Second, the salvation you have is imperishable. It's enduring. It's forever. Peter says, redeemed by the precious blood of Christ. Your salvation is not going to fade away. So just because you don't feel it, that don't mean that you don't have it. Because, it's just, because more stuff that you don't feel and you don't see is real than what you might feel and you might see. Again, when you are sensing that you are in exile or that you are alienated from the surrounding culture, it's easy to feel that it will be more sensible to go with the flow, to cave in to the mainstream thought of lifestyle. After all, everybody else is doing it. Surely, that would be a safer and a wiser thing to do. But your salvation and my salvation is not perishable. All our material possessions will one day fade away. But your salvation never will fade away. It is guaranteed by Jesus Christ, who died and rose again, chosen before the creation of the world, and your faith is ultimately in God himself. So therefore, my brothers and sisters, stand firm. Your salvation is secure. And if I might add, this is the only thing that is a sure thing. I know all states says yeah, you're in good hands with all states. But your salvation is better than all states. Your salvation is everlasting. It has no end. And then third, the family of God is worth loving. When you are in an alien and a, when you are an alien and a stranger, it can seem as if you are all on your own. But when you obeyed the truth and became a Christian, you entered into the family of God. So you have sincere love one uh, loves that love for you, love one Christian that are praying for you, and you are doing the same for them. So therefore, love one another. Yeah. Yeah. Love one another deeply from the heart, yeah. not just from the surface. Yeah. Go deep, love one another deeply from the heart. You are not on your own. You have brothers and sisters, or you're not alone. You have brothers and sisters who care about you. And whom you care for as well. Love, somebody says, never fails. Yeah. But where there is prophecy, the Bible tells us they will all cease. And where there is tongues, they will all be still. And where there is knowledge, it will all pass away. Yeah. Or you might have the PhD and all that other kind of stuff. In. But where there is knowledge, Scripture tells me it's going to all pass away. But love never fails. Just want to talk a little about God's love. God's love is gentle. God's love is faithful. God's love is merciful. God's love is compassionate. God's love is deep. It's unmeasurable. God's love is forgiving. It's full of grace. God's love is always with us, even in our pain and our suffering. God's love is eternal. God's love is protected. Love never fails. 
And if we want to be like Jesus, we're going to have to imitate these attributes of Jesus' love. And for the word of the Lord endures forever. Everything else, people, their glory, nature itself will fade away. But the word of the Lord will stand forever. And it is this word, the Bible said, that was preached to you and which you have believed. You have not just a truth, but you have the truth. You have the very word of God himself as the rock of your foundation. However shaky and uh, the society around you and I may seem, God's word will not fail. And in him, his word, you can trust. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of the Lord will last forever. Scripture tells us that the grass and the flowers will wither and fail. But the word of the Lord endures forever. God has committed himself to his word and keeps his promises. Everything that he said, every promise that he has made, I believe he, he keeps all of his promises. His word endures. His word overflows and, and shines color to our black and white world. Jesus Christ is the eternal word. He became human, became a servant, uh, giving up everything for us. Even to the point of his death on the cross. And through his death, he paid the price that we might have eternal life. Therefore, Matthew 6 and 9 is addressed to God, the Father, and begins by declaring his holiness, asking for his will to be accomplished on earth. And the model, it, this is what they call the model prayer, uh, also makes personal requests that we have our daily food, forgiveness of sin, and deliverance from temptation and evil. And so as redeemed and forgiven sinners, we pray for guidance. We pray that today you would lead us in paths of righteousness, in paths of holiness, and keep us from temptation. Help us to resist temptation and to walk humbly and holy before our God. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of what can make me whole again. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other help I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. There was a song, it's a song written by uh, it's was written by the Born Again Church Choir. And I love the words to this song. It, and in my conclusion, they said, Now the world is living all kinds of lifestyle. <clears throat> but the life of a Christian should be pure and undefiled. Yes, yes and everybody has faults to repent thereof and then walk in the light. Because holiness is right. God is God. And he'll always be the same. His word is the law. And not one tittle will ever change. We must distinguish between clean and unclean. And then walk in the light. Because holiness is right. We must be holy. Holy, we must be holy, holy, for the holiness is 
for holiness is right. Make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy. For without holiness, no one will see the Father. Amen. See to it that no one misses the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile man. Holiness is right. The word of God for the people. Right to 
the tree of life. Not because of anything, no goodness of our own, but because of your goodness, because of your grace, because of your mercy, you allowed us to assemble here one more time. And we say thank you. We praise you, Lord. We thank you for our family. We lift up both on our sick list, on our bulletin, our program this morning. We lift them up before you, God. Touch, heal, and deliver. Oh God, and if anything or in everything that's lurking in the atmosphere, oh God, with the authority that you have given us, we bind it in the name of Jesus. And we cast it from among us. Oh God, that we might be the people that you're calling for in these last and evil days. That when it's all over, when it's all over, when it's all that said and done, that we'll be able to stick our swords in the sands of time. And we'll study war no more. We hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over few things. Now come on up, and I'm going to make you move up over there. Somebody said, we'll go where Job declared the weakened would cease from trouble. And then our weary soul will be at rest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
you're praying for us. Amen. So we thank God for each of you. The power come from. Amen. That's what I call them. Amen. To God be the glory. We thank God and we honor God and we thank God for the shepherd of this house. Amen. Amen. To God be all the glory. Amen. Amen. Our community, we have one community announcement this morning. Um, the LZ's United Methodist Church in Bidal, Maryland, the pastor is Eugene Nichols. Uh, they will be having their annual Heritage and Family and Friends Day on May the 21st at 10 a.m. Uh, service will be outside on the church grounds, weather permitting. The guest pre, pre speaker will be Evangelist Thyra Frick of Newport News, Virginia. Food will be served after the service. Hot dogs, sausages, mac macaroni salad, potato salad, hamburgers, fried chicken, baked beans. So they say you can't get there by wanting to hear the word. <laughs> May the 21st at uh, 10 a.m. down at Elsie's United Methodist Church. The entire dress comfortably. comfortably. Chairperson is Beverly Davis, co-chair Carl and Taylor. To Reverend Young, First Lady Young, Lady Young, and my church family, thank you for your calls, your prayers, and your texts. God bless you, Sister Sarah Trader. Amen. Amen. Please remember our Bible studies are on Tuesdays at noon and at 6 p.m. via the prayer line. Prayer line is open on Wednesday at 6 a.m. and also at 12 noon. Today there will be a brief worship committee meeting right after service. Um, April the 27th, and that is Thursday, Pastor Young will be preaching for St. James United Methodist Church in West Dover, Maryland, for their morning devotions at 9.25 a.m., and this is via the conference call. The number is on the bulletin. You can dial in directly to join in on that morning devotion with Pastor Young at St. James United Methodist Church. April the 29th, that's next Saturday, Union Gospel Group will rehearse at 11 a.m. Uh, next Sunday morning is this Sunday. Uh, services are in charge of uh, the laity. Uh, yours truly will be bringing the word. Um, and, uh, looking into maybe, well, that's, that's a <laughs> we'll go into May next week. Amen. Um, this is just a reminder also to support the Daryl Marshall Memorial Fund t-shirt fundraiser. And this Fundraiser was created by his daughter, uh, Brittany, Brittany Cool. Um, she knew how much Union meant to her dad, and that he truly loved Union and the church family, and he was really passionate about our uh, building project. So this is to, uh, this is something she wanted to do, this uh, project. So please remember to get to Sister Gail or Sister um, Deborah. Amen. Your name, and I believe it runs to the end of April. You're taking names and and your donations um, up until the uh, end of April. So there's a flyer out of the vestibule, uh, t-shirts uh, with uh, for Daryl, brother Daryl, in memory of him. Amen. All the great work that he did here, and what we were looking forward to our building project is going to go forward. But we just want to remember. Brother Darrell, amen, for all of his hard work that he did, amen. So please support this uh, memorial fund, amen. Um, the, your offerings uh, have been placed in the uh, basket as you came in. If someone has not placed the offering, you can hold it up and the uh, usher will come and get it, amen. Please remember those on a prayer list. Please remember those on the prayer, prayer list. Pastor Young has already lifted them up in prayer. Um, our April birthday greetings on the 26th, Adam Trader, and on the 30th, next Sunday, um, Rosaria Shay, Sister Shay, Amen. Shay Lane, they will be celebrating birthdays. So please remember them um, this week. And also, you'll see the special invitation. Sister Marion Handy will observe her 90th birthday on Sunday, May the 7th at 2 p.m. at May Care Assisted Living on Hickory Mill Road in Salford. If you desire to attend, please let uh, the daughter, Flora, know. The number is on the back of your bulletin. 
Let her know by next Sunday, April the 30th. And, and if you go, thanks for sharing your volunteer. And in lieu of any personal gifts, they're asking that the family, um, the family is requesting that all items be donated to the care centers, such as socks, blankets, toiletries, etc. So in, in lieu of gifts, make a donation to the care centers.